All right, so this is the uh, first recording for Grero that I'm doing. Um, I kind of want to do more YouTube stuff, but uh, I just want to record this now. Uh, first recording. Uh, I'm sitting in my closet. It's the only place in the house that doesn't have a terrible echo. Uh, so today I wanted to read an article uh, from 2010. Uh, I'll read the article and then I'll just give a couple comments on it. So here we go. Uh, title is Mostly Straight Most of the Time by Rich C. Savin Williams and Kenneth M. Cohen. Dylan, a college varsity hockey goalie, is an eager volunteer for our interview. In fact, he loves telling his story. He, uh, he so loves telling his story that he stays beyond the 90 minutes he believes it will take and offers to come back for the chance to talk some more. When we reschedule, he's thrilled and, and shakes my hand and thanks me four times in the process of leaving. Besides being remarkably polite, Dylan is talkative, self-aware, and reflective with an engaging smile and an at-ease quality. Nothing he says feels rehearsed. As if, it's as if each topic he brings forth another triumph as if he's discovering his life as he reflects on those questions. When eventually asked about his sexuality, Dylan isn't phased. Though he wants to fuck lots of girls before graduation, he's not entirely heterosexual. I'm not sure there's a name for what I am, he says. He wants this process, this interview, to help him figure it out. By his own admission, Dylan says that he resides in the sexual Netherlands, his words, a place that exists between heterosexuality and bisexuality. In previous generations, such individuals might have been described as straight but narrow, straight but not narrow, bending a little, and heteroflexible. Dylan is part of a growing trend of young men who are secure in their heterosexuality and yet remain aware of their potential to experience far more sexual attractions, sexual interactions, crushes, and occasionally romantic relationships with other guys. Dylan lives these contradictions, seemingly hetero guys who now reject that label, sexual description, and identity. And he is not alone. National surveys in the U.S. and Canada show that 3-4% to of male teenagers, when given the choice to select a term that best describes their sexual feelings, desires, and behaviors, opt not for heterosexual, bisexual, or gay, but for mostly or predominantly heterosexual. An even higher percentage of post-high school young adult men in the U.S. and in a handful of other countries, including New Zealand and Norway, make the same choice. There are now more young men who feel they are mostly straight than those who say they are bisexual or gay. To the uninitiated, mostly straight is a paradox. These young men fracture the heterosexual agenda, or do we call it a lifestyle? If a guy is not exclusively into girls, he can't be totally straight. Aren't you supposed to pick a side? If a guy is not straight, not bisexual, and not gay, and yet he still falls in love and gets an erection, what, what the hell is he? It's a common misconception that the mostly straight phenomenon is nothing more than an adolescent foray into sexual experimentation, possibly due to excessive hormones and sexual confusion. Yeah, as a side note, uh, I talk about this in Chapter 7, the uh, situational homosexuality, and I'm glad the authors haven't made that mistake. Uh, continuing the article. Sizable numbers of young men maintain their mostly straight status, not just adolescents or college students, but as adults. Of the 160 guys we interviewed for a study in 2008 and 9, nearly one in eight reported same-sex attractions, fantasies, and crushes. The majority had these feelings since high school. A few others developed them more recently. And in a national sample of young men whose average age was 22, the mostly straight proportion increased when they completed the same, sex, uh, the, uh, the same survey six years later. These men aren't bisexuals in disguise. They're not closeted gay men seeking the privileges afforded to heterosexuals in society. They're not simply tired of sex with women. With the words mostly straight, they're describing a unique sexual identity, their complete romantic self. Uh, the article continues, but I just want to give uh, the first part of my commentary on this. So the, the, uh, they make the, the uh, authors talk about mostly straight, and they use the word mostly straight, and they say that, um, you know, and, and the article so far and, and after this is, is very good, but I do have a quibble with this emphasis on mostly straight. Uh, Dylan mentions that he doesn't know if there's a name for what he is. Because there's no name, why would there be many others like him openly? As such, you know, he could not really have too many relationships with other men like him. So how do we know that he's mostly straight because he mostly likes girls by nature or because there is an absence of available guys? You know, so is it mostly straight by nature or mostly straight by the culture? 
you, there's just not enough men to have uh, relationships with, sexual or romantic or whatever, so you end up going with mostly women. Okay, so that would be a cultural constraint. So you want to be mostly straight in the way that we think that sexual orientation is innate. So you're mostly straight. No, no, no. You'd be mostly straight because of culture. So that's not really innately mostly straight. Okay. Anyways, I talked about this uh, n numbers problem in chapter 8. Uh, quote, Without the word grero, how does one even overcome the seemingly insurmountable numbers problem? Straight relationships rely on the unseen numbers to work. Basically, all the women a man sees are potential mates. Sure, some are ugly, some are taken, some do not like you in return, but the remaining pool of mutually interested candidates is high enough. These days, few men can be assumed to be masculine and like other men. Whereas few women are offended if you show interest, many men can be violent if propositioned. So again, just to sum up, uh, we don't even know if this is mostly straight by nature or mostly mostly straight by culture because there's just such few number of people, although it's a very encouraging to see what four to six percent, uh, but it's, it still is too small for us to know whether this is mostly straight by culture or by nature or by culture. Now, obviously, I think it's culture, but uh, anyways, let's continue with the article. The article continues. So, among the mostly straights we surveyed, a few subtypes, subtypes stood out. First is the guy whose progressive political leanings lead him to feel constrained by traditional heterosexuality and masculinity, an outdated and unnecessary burden. Quote, I might have been gay if I had been raised differently, one said. Are we all born bisexual and culture pushes us one way or another? He challenges homophobic customs and assumptions. One such young man sings in a gay choir, another marches in pride parades as an ally, a third intends to come out as mostly straight in the military to test the don't ask, don't tell policy. Uh, the article was written in 2010. He wants to know how, does, how gay does one have to be to count? Okay, so my comment on uh, the first subtype, the progressive, is, uh, is that, you know, you have this progressive guy who says, I might have been gay if I had been raised differently. And aren't we all born bisexual and culture pushes us one way or the other? I mean, it, it's shocking that something like this would come from a progressive. After all the politically correct ideas over the years that gays are born that way and are 2 to 10 percent of the population, we have someone who has no qualms about expressing this kind of heresy. So that's very interesting, you know. You would not expect that after all this, you know, all the, I wouldn't say propaganda because you know, chapter 3 talks about that gays are born that way. Uh, but nonetheless, even with all that, there's people who say like, well, this, this can't be true. And it's not like they're bigots. They're, they express that they like other men, but not in the same way that gays might like other men or how it's expected. Okay, so the article continues. Second is the guy who finds guys physically attractive. One interview he pleaded, I mean, come on, tell me some guys aren't hot. If he finds himself staring at men in the gym, on the sports field, around the neighborhood, and in details, instinct, and V-man, uh, magazines, then how can he say to himself that he's totally straight? He notices guys in the buff who are buff, vaguely appealing and pleasurable to be around. He wonders if he openly desires the toned body, stylistic appearance, and athletic facility, and not the sexuality. A third guy may admit that he's a little sexually attracted to guys. It may not be his top priority, but he'll acknowledge that men occasionally pop up in his masturbatory fantasies. He doesn't expect to show uh, to have sex with men, but he isn't ruling it out either. Uh, he has a willingness to experiment. He's into sexual pleasure without strings, without meaning. Anything is possible given the right circumstances with the right person. Well, almost everything. Most interviewers drew the line at actual male-male intercourse. Okay, so my comments on, on the second and third type of guy. The second and third types uh, think guys are hot. Uh, some may even want a bit of sex. They like sex without strings, without meaning, says the article. Uh, as with the phrase mostly straight, how do we know this disposition? Uh, sex without strings, without meaning without the, you know, the, the kind of intimacy you would associate with a, a long-term relationship, how do we know this disposition is, n is nature and not environment? With homophobic shame, why would most men be into more than sex aspect of a taboo relationship? A, a quick fuck is hidden. No public humiliation of holding hands or society at large knowing that you like other men. So I, again, I, I, you know, we have to realize that culture could be pushing these guys 
uh, far away from the intimate relationships that they might naturally be capable of. Okay. Uh, so the fourth guy, the article continues, is a guy like Dylan. He grants that he's not totally straight and that his feelings for guys are more than just sexual. They're romantic. He can imagine experiencing emotional, intimate relationships with other young men. It just seems natural. He's into cuddling without the pressure of sex. He could spend countless hours with, a, uh, with, a sp with special buddies. He's infatuated with best friends, teammates, and video game partners. Uh, so my comment, the fourth type is the one that admits that his feelings are more than sexual, they're romantic. Uh, this is ideally what Guerrero should strive for. You know, this is, when you strip away all the cultural homophobia, when you strip away what your parents told you, what your stupid teachers told you, what culture tells you, uh, what your, your peers tell you, this is what it should be about. You realize that I like spending time around men. Uh, I like penises. I mean, you know, most guys masturbate and the ones that don't lie about it, right? Uh, that's the joke. So, you know, you like penises, you like spending time with guys. I don't know, put it together. I mean, it's, it's, what's the difference? Now, that doesn't mean, you know, you're going to be, be having sex with every single guy you see out there, but it should be something that is, uh, well, in an ideal world, of course, let's be uh, idealistic. Uh, in an ideal world, you would not have qualms about expressing those feelings. And, you, and, and, and even more, you know, we might not get to that society very quickly, but at least to yourself, you should be honest about them and not hide them and repress them, okay? So anyways, uh, the article continues, and this is just the last part, so there's uh, half a page, uh, less than half a page. All four guys have one thing in common. Unlike their totally straight brothers, they're not averse to sexual or romantic feelings, encounters, or relationships with other males. It's unlikely that mostly straight youth are limited to just four types. As additional young men recognize and reveal their sexual breath, they assist all of us to understand previously unrecognized sexual and romantic possibilities. How many of us have these feelings and are clamoring to come out as mostly straight. I hope a lot. Indeed, throughout his life, Dylan had boy chums, boy crushes, and boy infatuations with teammates and best friends. He makes lingering, intense, frequent references to his core group of high school buddies and to the male companionships he habitually seeks. He readily hugs and even cuddles with male friends while watching a movie and eating popcorn, especially if they are on the same wavelength." Quote. Dylan could see himself meeting a guy uh, and together developing a, quote, partnership. They won't act on it sexually, uh, again, that's, that's culture, uh, continuing, but they'd be physically affectionate. Dylan imagines that their relationship would be difficult for others to understand, which is why, uh, you know, he would say, he's saying, oh, but it's not going to be sexual, it's, we're just going to be cuddling all the time. Uh, article continues, they'd think it was a gay relationship because of the time he and his partner spent together, the secrets they shared, and the knowing glances, nods, and code words they exchanged. This is the, quote, homosexual thing that most interests him. Far more than we realize, young males wait to be released from their heterosexual straitjackets. Dylan might just show us the way. Or, may I humbly add, Guerrero might show us the way by showing us the theory and history uh, and everything else behind these attractions. Well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, this is the first recording, as I said, of uh, Agrero podcast or whatever we're going to be calling it. Uh, and if uh, you're hearing this and it got recorded right, uh, this is, you know, one for one. I didn't have to do any redos. Thank you for listening.